Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, Southland Video here, bringing you the conclusion to the Haybike Mars 2.0. This is the final ride video to kind of give you a better idea of how it performed and my overall opinion of the bike. So sit back and enjoy the video and make sure you watch till the end. There's an interesting ending to this. Alright, let's see how it does. few bumps on the old walking trail. All right, so. All right. All right, so that's apparently going toward a roadway. We'll avoid that. There's a trailhead, I guess. The steering is a little, little quick to move, I guess. I don't know. The bike is pretty comfortable, though. There's a good level spot. So we'll crank it up pedal assist too. Pedal assist two about 13. Pedal assist three. Yeah, I can't keep up with it on pedal assist three. Thing's got some power to it. You gotta get used to the steering though. Steering's a little quick. Any slight adjustment is uh, Move the seat up just a little bit more. I feel that my legs are just not very comfortable. We'll move this up. Well, no, I don't think I should. Definitely a beautiful place, by far. I didn't use the gears yet, I showed you how much I'm used to it. Pretty steep grade, 11 miles an hour, pedal assist, 
just look. Now, just keep in mind here, I am actually not pedaling the entire time and using the actual throttle. And I am pulling a cart with a five-year-old and two backpacks and a cooler on this. And using throttle only for a, a good amount of the time. And this bike is still keeping an average of seven to eight miles an hour on this grade. And it don't look that steep here. But I will promise you this. That was a pretty steep hill right there. And it did a great job. And remember, this is a lower end bike. This is, uh, I guess, on the cheaper spectrum. It's like you're just oh, let's trying to treat a deer here. Look, Macy. Look, Macy, deer. Oh, there's a baby. There's a baby deer. Did you see him? Now she's starting to grind down now. We're at seven. Seven miles now, which is pretty good because between Macy, the cart, and my gear, see there's well, well beyond the weight limit for this bike, probably. But it is doing it. A little bit of noise coming from back there, but she is. I'm impressed. I am really, really truthfully impressed. Just not tuned to it yet, so I'm going to give it a chance. Nobody here, so we can get a little bit of get a little bit of beans. A little bit of beans. Ooh, honestly, for as far as the as far as just if he was just gonna use throttle. Awesome. Because what I'm telling right now, just throttle alone. It has no problem, plenty of power. And keep in mind, I've got me, the cart, Macy, uh, two backpacks, a cooler, full of beverages. So, I mean, yeah, and it's handling it like a champ. So if I was to try to tally up all the entire weight so, not including the bike's weight, I don't do that. My weight is anywhere from 215 to 220 on any given day. Uh, Macy, she runs about 50. So we're looking at about, we just we wouldn't say 270 right now. Uh, I know that one backpack with all my camera gear in it is at least say it's at least 20 pounds well 15 20 pounds easy so we'll give that another 290 I would say with the cooler that we're looking at right at 300 pounds on this bike not including the bike itself the bike itself is right there 75 I think what it says with battery so you easily 300 pounds with just rider and equipment no, that's not including the cart. I don't know how much the cart weighs. So yeah, awesome, awesome little bike. Cool. And it, and it feels so much easier to maneuver than that big fat tire bike. Even though the big fat tire, fat tire bike is a more expensive version. Uh, this version here is smaller, lighter. Because the other one I think with battery is 80 some pounds. And I was really concerned. That's why I went with a thousand watt because I have already ridden a 750. I was a little bit worried about the 750 because I've rode it up our yard, and I was worried about the 750 keeping up with Macy and all the gear. You doing good? All right, having fun. That's all that matters. 
like it. Now I'm debating, going up the mountain or... Which way you want to go? We can't. We came from this way. You want to go that way? This way. Yeah. All right. was a steep <laughs> that was a steep hill All right, I'm back. Due to battery restrictions, I had to turn you off for a while. However, here's the dilemma. Number one, not a hundred percent sure where I'm going. And number two, On your right. All right, so back to what I was saying. I'm down to one dot on the battery. I'm not 100% sure which way I'm supposed to go. So this should be, well that's the wrong way too. This should be fun. <sighs> Covered bridge. Okay, that's a plus. What's about to happen here is I'm about three miles out from my car and this bike is about to go dead because this is the first time I've rode it and I wasn't familiar with using the throttle a little too much. It only has a 12 amp hour battery and it basically 
ran out on me. And I'm not in the best shape in the world. And these bikes aren't exactly as easy to pedal as a normal bike. So, sorry I didn't get you through the whole experience. Uh, it got rough. As far as I know, I pedaled for three miles with, what was it we came up with earlier? 300 pounds? I pedaled an e-bike for three miles. And not on level terrain uphill downhill so the valuable lesson to be learned with this is uh, when you test the new e-bike don't push it don't push it all the way to the dead zone because i'll tell you what once it got to three it dropped that was it once it got to three green bars on the battery indicator it just dropped off like nothing Unbelievable. But it's done. Okay, so I left that little bit in there for a couple of reasons. One is I wanted to show you that I pushed the bike too far. Uh, I was totally unprepared about how far that battery would take me while putting it under so much stress and I put it through a lot of stress I know you heard me throughout the video talking about how much weight I was pulling and it is a thousand watt motor um, and I just pushed the battery a little too far I also made the mistake of watching the green dots on my screen instead of actually pulling up the volt indicator on the screen uh, since then I always watch the volt indicator I could care less what the green dots show they're 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 inaccurate I mean one minute they're it's full the next minute it's it's almost out and then it'll jump back and forth the vote meter on the screen is actually really good and spot on and there's even a chart out there that you can get and kind of let you know once you start getting down to 43 you might be in a little bit of trouble but i mean it all boils down to it's got a 12 amp hour battery and that's how the company saved money with this bike it's how they sold it so cheap they put a small battery in it and if you're just going to ride short distances it's great but for me i'm going to probably upgrade the battery to a 20 amp or just buy another 12 amp that way we've got a spare battery on hand and that way i can uh i can make it home at least and don't have to worry about uh trying to pedal three miles to the car yeah i'm not in the best shape in the world that was rough all right so now the next thing that i ran into was the baskets i loved the baskets i love the front and i love the rear basket however the front and rear baskets do cause a problem they limit where you can put the folded bike and what i mean by that is once I tried to put the bike into the back of my SUV, the baskets prevented me from putting it upright. And here's what I mean. Sorry about the picture being a little bit dark, but now without the baskets, I could set it in here just like this and put something beside it or put another third row seat up and it gives me plenty of room. With the baskets, I have to lay the bike down. And in doing so, it takes up the entire back of the SUV. And with either basket, front or back, it makes it just too long to fit in the trunk of a normal car. So if you're gonna use the baskets, know that it limits the spaces that you can put the back folded. You, unless your trunk is a lot larger than ours, I mean, we couldn't get it in. And we, could not fit it upright in the back of an SUV. So I ended up removing both baskets and putting some saddlebags on, which works great. So all things considered, my overall review of the Haybike Mars 2.0 is, I recommend it. It is a great bike. And for the price point, you can't beat it. It's comfortable, it's stylish, and I love it. And remember, I'm not sponsored by Haybike. I bought this myself. But I really like the bike. I really do. 
and other than getting another battery for it I say go get you one enjoy it have fun with it well that concludes the video I appreciate you sticking around thanks for watching and I'll see you later Thank you.